With everything going on in the world right now, we realized there was a way to help our community while continuing to empower entrepreneurs to build brands that impact the world. So in this video, we're actually gonna show you guys how you can use custom face masks to spread a message or simply brand and include as part of your collections. Now, this is part of our business from home series, which you'll find linked right down below and also in the call out cards on top of this video. So if you're a new visitor to this channel, hit that subscribe button and turn on post notifications to be alerted to the latest drops. Now to keep this video super simple, let's get started with the design process. All right, you guys, to get started, you're gonna to wanna to open up your art file using Adobe Illustrator. Adobe Illustrator allows you to create vector graphics, which include any font-based designs or any images that you're gonna need. Uh, what we're gonna to do to get started is we're just gonna get started by creating a new artboard. Uh, we're using a three by one inch for this design with the beauty about Adobe Illustrator is the fact that you could always scale your designs up. For this design, since we're doing the I can't breathe, uh, text what we're gonna do is just simply write it out and then you change the font to comic sans we're using comic sans bold which is a little bit thicker and allows it to print a little nicer on the face mask since we're gonna be using a smaller dimension we still want it to be prominent uh, what you're gonna do is just simply hit shift and you can simply scale it up uh, vector graphics allow you to scale up or scale down without losing any definition, which is the reason that you need them when you're going to be doing any vinyl cutting. As you guys saw, I created one line of text, but what we're going to do is break it up into two different layers. So we're going to have I can't in one layer and breathe on a separate layer. This allows us to simply copy that into the file program that we're using, and uh, it allows us to scale them up individually if we need it. You can simply do this by copying it and then just verifying the placement of it again and just laying it over top and then deleting the original layer type. So now that this is completed, you simply file save as and title the file. Make sure it's an AI version. As long as that's completed, you're now ready to start using the vinyl cutter for it. So once you complete the files, you'll simply send it over to the program that the vinyl cutter operates off of. And in my case, my bro C's is the one that's putting this thing together. So uh, yeah, tell us tell us what it takes to actually create a file like that and put it into a physical product. All right, so first off, you'll need a vector file. These uh, printers and these machines, they work off of vector art. So basically it plots on the system, the graph, and it cuts exactly like an outline, like a stencil. So we're working with uh, Adobe Illustrator, which is a program that I recommend. And if you're, in case you guys are wondering about the Adobe Suite, check the link down below in the bio and you'll be able to see uh, the special link that takes you to an offer for Adobe Creative Cloud. Affiliate link, by the way. All right, so we pulled up John's file here. And before we get started, before we put it into the printing software, we wanna make sure we know the dimensions that we're gonna choose. And I'm gonna show you how we got that. So these masks, obviously, we're using the mask as an example here in the video that we're making is we're comfortable with two inches in the center spot that we're gonna sew on on the right side of this mask. And yeah, not sew, but print on. And as you can see here, it's 3.5 inches, probably about, maybe we can probably go with four if you really wanted to print across this whole thing, but we're gonna go with two. So as you can see, you can probably go with a little more if you wanted to go higher, but we're just gonna use this little small font. So we got the sizing now, so now we're gonna go ahead and import this into the software. Great Cut 4, which is what this software uses, is a, just came out last year, the software, and it was a, a specifically designed for this printer. It's cool because it actually came with the printer when we bought it, so it was simply plug and play and download and install your software. Import the, the AI file, automatically reads the image and the layers that are in there. So as you can see here, we're gonna zoom in here, and we can actually rotate this here. We're gonna do that real quick. And then, like we were saying earlier, we need to make the longest word two inches. So we're gonna, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna move this down so I know exactly where the end is here. And then we're gonna make this, zoom in a little bit. As you can see, there's a ruler here on the side, which is really cool. Okay, so now that we got the dimensions right that we want, and we can actually double check by measuring the font here. And it tells me 1.94, that's really close to two inches. And then we can even measure the other piece that's gonna go on the other side of the mask. So in case you're confused, we're gonna have one say, I can't, and on the other side, it's gonna say breathe. We have to actually print it all in one, but we're gonna cut it after it's printed. So we're ready to go. Before we do that though, we're gonna have to output the file, but we need to make sure that our material that we have in here is the right color. As you can see right here, there is no material loaded. 
Uh, the printer's on, it's reading on there, but it's not loaded in yet, so we're gonna have to load that. Every printer's different, but we're using the Expert 2LX 24 inch wide vinyl cutter. So we're gonna load the material in here by raising these little feet up. You gotta make sure that this paper is nice and straight. I like to actually put it to the bottom here. And then I can see what line it's actually measured to and just pull it back. And put it right there. Make sure these feet are nice. You gotta make sure the, the feet here are actually aligned with these white marks. All of these details in regards to setting up your uh, vinyl printer can be found in the owner's manual. Every, like I said, every vinyl printer is different. Every model is different. So you have to make sure you follow the directions with your vinyl printer. I'm gonna go ahead and put it origin set online. I have to tell the printer where the paper's at. So I have to go ahead and do that, boom. Right now what it's doing is measuring the size of the paper. It's gonna tell my computer, like this is how much working area I have. Cause every single piece of vinyl, even though this is only 15 inches, you can only print in the middle of somewhere around 13 inches. You'll see right now. Now that's all set up. The, the printer knows exactly what to do, where, where it can print, where it can't print. So now we're gonna go ahead and take a look here. And what we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna tell the software to read the material size. So right now, if you see, it says it thinks it can print on 18 inch wide paper, but it can't hit ma read material size. Maximum printing area 13.137. So we can go ahead and hit that preview button. I like looking to see how it's gonna print out before we do anything. And then as you can see here, boom, two inches there and then two inches there. They're ready to go. And if you're printing multiple designs and you just layer this, you can layer it. Yeah, paper. like what I can do is I can hit duplicate and I can like print a bunch of these out if I wanted to, or I could um, obviously put different designs out. If I'm printing all, if I'm printing something in different colors and I want to layer them because we're doing multicolor prints, which is something you can do simple to screen printing. Um, very similar to screen printing is what you do is you just layer the vinyl, the different colored vinyl on top of each other to make like a cool design. So that's a little more hardcore with uh, with this uh, this way of printing, but you can learn it. Hit output, and then it's printing. So what's happening right now? So right now it's actually there's this little blade here. That's the sensor. That's reading the paper and making sure the design's okay. It's cutting through, but not all the way through. It's just cutting enough to where it's cutting the actual vinyl, the heat transfer vinyl, and not through the actual backing, which is sticky. But you want to keep that. And every every type of heat transfer vinyl is different. That's what you one thing you want to keep uh, make sure of. So we're gonna do is put it offline. We're gonna move it forward, and then we're gonna grab my tool real quick. You need one of these or scissors work. And then we're gonna do is just grab this. Let's cut it straight through. Boom. Obviously, I like saving this because we can use it for something else. But for this example, we're gonna go ahead and do this. And now what we're gonna do is get the uh, actual uh, material ready. We're gonna weed it. Before we do that, we're gonna go ahead and cut the excess. The weeding tool is right here. So this actually is supplied by Caesar, the same company that makes this uh, Wait, transfer show, vinyl. Show it, which one is it? By Caesar. Caesar. Well, it's Caesar. almost like C's. It's Both almost for like C's. C's. Yep, it's almost like C's. I thought that was funny. I was like, and it's actually uh, Caesar uh, branded heat transfer vinyl. It's actually really good. It's really easy to weed. Um, it's really easy to apply to tons of different types of fabric, so just be sure to read the instructions. If you uh, look at each fabric roll that you get, there's instructions, and it tells you exactly like what temperature and what pressure to use. So yeah, I'll show you right now. So like this is for the the brand did vinyl heat transfer that we use. It's a Caesar Easy Weed. It tells you what to do. You have to cut it in reverse, and I'm pretty sure that's what we did. Nope, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot to flip the artwork. <laughs> I was like, wait a second, I know. Vote for C's. He's a people's man. My bad, take two. With any tool that you end up buying or using, whether it's heat transfer, whether it's vinyl cutter, it always has a learning curve. Um, what's really cool about what Heat Press Nation did, which is where we got all of our equipment, actually. Uh, we purchased this equipment. Uh, some of you guys may be watching and wondering, well, how much does this equipment end up costing? Uh, to let you guys know, it's essentially this is a $700 heat, heat press. We have about a $500 cutter. And then I actually bought a bunch of equipment like these papers, the weeding tools and all that. All said and done, it was about $1,379 out the door, which as an investment is like, oh wow, that's a pretty big investment up front. But you know, when they send that stimulus check, I was like, what am I gonna spend that stimulus check on? Why don't I stimulate the economy, right? 
And I ended up just investing into this equipment and it was only about a, almost $200 out of pocket, out of my own pocket. But at the end of the day, like this is gonna create new opportunities and allow us to go to market a lot faster with ideas that we had. And hopefully it helps you guys in uh, creating your own product. So if you guys wanna shop for anything, we have an affiliate link right down below with Heat Press Nation. Uh, purchasing through there gives us a little bit of a commission, which helps us continue to build more content for you. And uh, yeah, and if you guys have any questions, just leave the comment down below. All right, so now that we have the right vinyl and it's flipped horizontally, so it'll actually, we're actually able to apply it now to the material, but before we do it, we have to weed it, like I was saying earlier. And what weeding is, you're literally just moving, removing the excess material that you're not gonna apply to whatever you're transferring to, whether it's a shirt or in this case, a mask. So all this white stuff, all the white heat transfer vinyl we're taking off now isn't going to be applied to the design. And you have to be really careful because you don't wanna leave any excess on here. Cause like I said, it, once it's on there, it's really hard to take off and you don't wanna mess with, you don't wanna mess up. You're gonna have a bad day if you do so. So let's go ahead and weed off the little bee part in there. Boom, 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 boom. The A, the A. and then the A there. And there's actually, you can see here where I cut, there's a part there too as well. That's the material he's talking about. If you leave that in yeah, there, you then you that. will. Yeah, it's like little tiny pieces when I was cutting around the excess area. You will have a bad day. You will have a bad day. <laughs> and there you go, it's ready to print. But before we do that, we actually just have to cut half of it. Since we're only gonna be cutting, applying, since we're only gonna be applying half to one side, half to the other, here's the mask. And there it is. But before we do that, we're gonna have to actually iron this to make it nice and flat. But also one thing I learned while in the process of learning how to print on these masks is that when you just apply pressure to this, you notice that it's uneven surface here. So it's not gonna fully apply the pressure to the print. So what I needed to do, I actually have some- What do you mean uneven pressure? Well, it's uneven, it's an uneven surface here. So if you see, there's like a high, it's like a mountain, as I would basically say, it's really high here and it's, and it's like low here. So there's this bump. So when you're ironing, when you're heat pressing it, um, it's not applying the full pressure to the design because it's applying the pressure to this thing. It'll still be good enough though, right? But just not perfect. It's just not perfect. What I realized is it's better, it'll stick better if you do put a layer underneath here to allow it to apply the pressure fully to the design. So what that is, is using this vinyl that I have uh, around here. I have a bunch of fabric and, and stuff around here. We also sew in this shop. We create prototypes of different bags that we've done in the past. Stuck that in there. Obviously, it's heat resistant. You don't want to use anything that can melt, so, like foam. So use some vinyl that's used for. Did you use foam before? I did use foam before. Uh, I'll show you. I don't know where I left the piece at, but it's melted around here somewhere. <laughs> and uh, is that why the fire extinguisher there? Yeah, the fire extinguisher there and for those exact reasons. When stuff catches on fire, luckily it didn't catch on fire this time. So just gotta better be safe uh, than sorry at this point. So yeah, so we have that. As you can see now, the piece of vinyl is in the center here so it's nice and and uh flat for us to print on before it was like this would stick up so now we can actually print on it so what we're gonna do now is go ahead and take this out we already have the heat press set to 305 and we're gonna be doing a pass oh not a pass but we're gonna be doing a press at 15 seconds but before we do that we need to just like i said iron this out apply the sheet there to protect the material that sheet is for the heat yeah so it doesn't burn your fabric. And we're just gonna do a quick five seconds. Nothing too much. So what kind of pressure have you, are, you, are you using on this thing and how do you verify the pressure? Okay, so to verify pressure, that's a great point by the way, is with this knob, is how you actually change the pressure. But to verify the pressure, a really easy way that I've learned is by using a piece of paper. And using the piece of paper while it's hot, obviously underneath this, you stick this underneath. We'll take that out of the way, that's nice and ready for us. You put about two inches of the paper in front, you close it, and you pull on it. So if you, if you can't pull on it without putting a lot of force into it, that's about medium pressure. So right now I'm, I'm putting quite a bit of force, but not too much. It's about, that's about medium pressure. If it was easily removable, that's really low light pressure. But if it's really hard to pull out, I didn't put a lot of force into that, that would be high pressure. Right now we're in the middle of the medium range, medium to high, I actually learned with these masks, I had to put a little bit more pressure on it for the actual heat transfer vinyl to stick to the actual fabric. So that's why it's a little different than what the actual 
material says to do. The material says to use medium pressure. I use medium to high, somewhere in the middle there. So now we're ready to go. Put that to the side there. That's the left side of the mask. Always make sure you put the right thing on the right spot. So this is the left. Actually, no, this is the right, the right side of the mask there. So we're gonna put that in the middle. We're gonna center that there. And you did want it right in the middle, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, just wanted to make sure because on the other ones, I'm, I made them kind of more to the right, but. Yeah, well, like as long as we can kind of connect it a little in the center. Oh, okay, so you did want it more. From the ground up was a good example though. However, you did the ground up. Oh, okay, so yeah, that is a, that is a little bit centered then. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so we'll center that and I'm centering out this thing here as far as the angle goes. It goes there, let's put that right. There, boom. Put this back on. And now what are we gonna do? Yeah, so now what we're gonna do is go ahead and press it for 15 seconds. And this thing right here says the pressure, yeah, says the temperature. The temperature and the time, and the time we have it set to, and obviously the time that's currently left on this one. And this is a Signature Series Pro. And like I said, Johnny said earlier, all the links can be found in the description below for all the equipment that we used here. And this type of heat transfer vinyl, you remove while it's hot or cold, and then it's ready to go. We're gonna let it cool down for a second before we do the other side. I just don't want it to stick to the, the bottom there. As you can see, it's nice and ready. And that's all good there. Yeah, in the meantime, while we wait, one other thing you should know when it comes to doing heat transfers is just making sure you get to know your equipment as much as possible. I've read the manuals like twice at least before I started using them because the manuals tell you so much information. I know a lot of you guys are like, read the manual, what? It's like, no, you literally have to read the manual. There's a lot of little details, like whether, what kind of system this thing will work on. Um, I had issues with this laptop. I had to update it like twice. It wouldn't work on the version uh, that it was uh, currently on back then. I was also keeping in mind that you need a good laptop. You don't need the newest computer to run Adobe Illustrator, but you need something probably within the last three years, at least. I know this is about a three-year-old computer. So just keep that in mind and don't be afraid to ask questions. Heat Press Nation, they have a hotline and have really great customer service. If you're ever looking for help, they're a phone call away. You don't have to worry about like, oh man, who am I gonna call? Who would I gotta call to come in to fix this stuff? No, like they'll, they'll help you guys. So don't be afraid, you're not alone when it comes to this. All right, so now that we're ready, we're gonna go ahead and turn it around. We don't have the iron on the other side because that's already ready. We're just gonna go ahead and place that there. So we can kind of take a look and see how it's gonna look like there. Probably move it a little bit more to the right there to keep that. See if you can center it maybe the same, the same distance right around. Oh, from there? Oh, okay. Yeah, we're gonna do that. We can go, oh, yeah, about, a, about an inch. We'll center that about an inch. Yeah, it's about an inch. Yep. Yeah, mm -hmm. okay. Boom. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and place that there. Another like another 15 seconds, we're gonna give it another hit, but on the other side. We do that there. If you guys are wondering how I got this shirt made, uh, take a look at the other video right over here on this side. There's gonna be a card for it. You'll learn how we do these shirts too as well. Peel again while hot, boom. It's ready to go. There you go. Nice and warm on the face too, as well. Nice and toasty. So, yeah, and this is, that's how you do one colored heat transfers. There's different ways, there, like I said, if you read the manual, there's a few video tutorials that we might end up doing another video on this. If, you, if you're wondering, if you're looking to try to do two or three colored heat transfers, Leave a comment down below because I would love to do a video on that if you get if you get enough interest in it. And but this is just a simple way of doing one design. We have a few other designs here that we've done, as you can see here. We have the FD, the from the ground up logo, this llama I found online, and uh, yeah, that, that's it. I, I, this one too. Oh yeah, then the other one, the other from the ground up one that we've done too before, and so as you guys can see, this redesign. We made it a little smaller, it fits a little more across the face. And at the beginning of this video, it looked like the mask was super crumbled up. It was because I was wearing it a little tight. 
And that's the reason that I really like these masks that we started uh, offering on our own site. It's called the streetwearapparel.com. It has these adjustable buckles which allow you, which, which allow it to really fit to almost any face. As you guys can see, uh, it contours really nicely here. Allows the design to print really nicely. It's 100% antimicrobial, which means that it doesn't allow bacteria to build up. It's also uh, breathable, and more importantly, you can get it with as low as three quantities on an order, 300. How many you guys want, you get it for wholesale prices with no license required. Now, the reason I mention it is because this year, a mission of the channel is to start connecting entrepreneurs in the apparel industry with each other. Now we've been building out this channel for years and just offering uh, different ways for you guys to make money, for you guys to make products easily. And this year, 2020 moving forward, we're starting a new decade. Why not connect entrepreneurs who are designing products, uh, whether it be blank apparel that you guys can use for your own brand. This is the kind of products that we are launching on the site, which you guys will be able to have access to with no license required. So if you guys are interested, go ahead and check out that website. It's called streetwearapparel.com and you'll find a link to that in the description where you guys can show your support by purchasing the products that will make your brand stand out. And more importantly, if you're a new visitor to this channel, I highly appreciate you checking out this video. I hope it helps you continue to build your brand, to build new product lines. And if you'd like me to make a certain video on a certain topic, leave a comment right down below. I appreciate every single one of you guys watching. Um, right now during these times, I felt like it was definitely necessary to help spread a message. So if you guys are going to print this, what I'm going to do is we're actually going to allow you to download the graphics if you guys just want to download the graphics and start printing immediately, which we're going to link right down below. Print them on mass, give them out to friends, um, help spread the message that is something that needs to be heard. And I think it's been years and years of this injustice that's been happening for everyone of color. Um, a lot of people don't necessarily see it on a day to day because they didn't grow up that way. Um, I saw it growing up, but I also saw the other side of the law enforcement as I was also part of the police academy, the police cadet program. Uh, so I saw officers that were amazing, the kind of people that would give a shirt off their backs in order to help you in everyday life. But I also saw those officers that were questionable about why they were in the department if they weren't really there for the community. So I see that and I've seen it since then. I, that's the reason I had to kind of move away from that stage of my life to build something that would help people of underprivileged communities to really come up and create something for themselves. So I really hope that this channel helps you do that. And that is the mission that's always been the mission of this channel. And uh, I'm excited for what the future holds. And I hope that you tag me and you know, bring me along in your journey. I'm available through Instagram. Uh, my links are right down below. If you want to send me a message, I reply to them on a weekly basis. So I try my best to get to everybody. So I appreciate every single one of you guys because I realize you're real viewers and I hope I can empower you to make an impact in your community and in the world. So thank you guys for watching.